But the test of wealth can distract us from the value of our faith family. What is he saying about money? He says all this stuff that you've invested so much time in is going away. The point is, we're personally accountable for how we get and how we spend our money. So what are we investing in with the time that we have? Investment in riches doesn't necessarily yield the highest returns in the long run. We prepare in this life for eternity. So when we step on persons who are eternal to acquire that which isn't, we've sinned. And that will be a judgment against us. So our patient focus, our patient focus, not easy, our patient focus must look to eternal fruit. Over and over we've seen we have to deal with the fallen world looking and hoping for the next one. But we're not so focused on the next one that we forget that there are people around us. The harvest that will satisfy us isn't on this earth, but no one can bring in the harvest by themselves. You can't be the church by yourself. You can't go off in a corner and say, I'm just going to do the Jesus thing, and I'm going to make the right decisions, and that's all that I need. I just need me and God, me and God, me and God. But what I want to proclaim to you here this morning is that what James is exhorting us to do is to turn to one another and ask for help. If there's something going on and you isolate yourself, the body of Christ cannot help you. James is teaching that that is where God chooses to heal. Somehow, God takes broken, messed up people and because of their prayers, will choose to heal other broken, messed up people. He says the prayer of faith will save the person and and the sin will be forgiven and they'll be healed. It doesn't say which person has the faith. Is it the sick person or is it the person that they've called to help? When you choose to confess your sin to another believer, it's not about you, it's not about your sin, it's not about the person you're confessing with. When God chooses to heal you, forgive you of your sin, and heal whatever ailment it is that you're going through, it's not about you, it's not about the healing, and it's not about the person who prayed for you. All of this pointing to God. This is hard. I, I understand. I'm asking you to to confess sin, to say to somebody, this is where I have sinned. But the encouragement, I think, in this text is that it's not about you. It's not about your sin because Jesus has already forgiven it. But it's about building the community because nobody can bring in the harvest that we're looking forward to by ourselves. We can't get there by ourselves. But the test of wealth can distract us from the value of our faith family. But the test of wealth can distract us from the value of our faith family. 